but everything everywhere all at once. And I'm going to start the review off by saying that it is very good. It is very good. Um, you know, it's it's now, I think, the highest rated movie on Letterboxd, and it took no time to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and here's how I'm going to start this, because I, I kept thinking about this movie. I did not expect to think about this movie uh, <laughs> while watching this movie. But the plot is very diff. It's kind of difficult to explain, but yeah. in so many words, Michelle Yao plays Evelyn Wang. She's a stressed out uh, owner of a laundromat who's undergoing an audit, a business audit by an IRS agent played by Jamie Lee Curtis. And essentially she winds up just as she's in the meeting with the auditor, she winds up getting sucked into the multiverse or at least winds up seeing an alternate reality version of her husband. And who kind of informs her that there are these multiple different realities where Evelyn's living several different lives. Uh, and on top of all this too, she's got, she's, she's close to getting a divorce with her husband. Her daughter's alienated on top of just by her mother, but also she has a girlfriend, which isn't going to sit well with her grandfather, uh, Evelyn's father. Yeah. (laughs) So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of chaos in this movie to say the least, but you know what it reminded me of? This is the year I think where mothers and daughters have a reconciliation period between the two of them, because we saw that earlier this year. And when I, well, actually when I say earlier this year, I mean last month, quite literally, you saw that in Turning Red. That's one of the focal points of Pixar's new movie, Turning Red. And this movie is like that reconciliation, but from the mother's perspective yeah. versus the daughter's perspective, which is what Turning Red is about. There's so much more to dive into this movie. And I think that by the end of this, Joe and I are just going to scratch the surface. But that's the immediate thing that jumped out to me with this movie was that like, it's another story and, and we don't get these a lot. So it's not even remotely a played out trope, but it's another story of like a mo- what it comes down to a mother-daughter reconciliation and also a woman coming to grips of trying to appreciate life in a way and in the moments, which Mm -hmm. sounds a lot more broad than I think this movie is. What say you, though, Joe? I completely agree with everything you just said. Uh, This movie, it it is like, I'm going to say this right now, let me get this out of the way, because uh, (laughs) I had a few people who haven't seen the movie yet that I know they probably actually won't like something like this. This movie is made, it's really catered to, the best way to put it is a film hipster. People who love to see just weird stuff for the sake of the art. Um, And are Steve and I like that? In some ways, yes. We do like to see something original. We do like to see something that we don't really see often in theaters. And everything, everywhere, all at once is that. But it's also that to a fault at times. And I'll get into that later. Um, this is a ton of fun though. I, I still think even if you're not like a big film hipster that I'm not saying go out and see it, but if you see it on Netflix, whatever it may be, maybe even for a matinee show, if you're not a big film buff, like we are, this actually might be a really fun time for you. So as long you just go along for the ride. Don't try to follow the plot. Don't try to dissect everything. Um, just, just go for the ride because visually to me. This movie is one of the best visual movies I've seen in a long time. It is so cool to look at at points. And just what they do with the visuals from time to time and how they show the multiverse and like how it's like, you know, it interacts with this and everything. It's like, this is the stuff I love. Of course, I know A24 is not behind the movie. They're the ones that distributed it. But this is the stuff we love seeing distributed by them. It's also the stuff, and again, I'll get into this later, that I kind of roll my eyes at from time to time distributed by them because I'm like, you know what, man? This is sometimes the typical A24 movie that I kind of make fun of A24 for making at points. But this is definitely on the better end of things. And to me, it's mainly due to two things. One is, again, the visuals. I think the action is shot really fun. It's great. It's wacky. It's cartoony. At times, it's a bit too cartoony, but for the most part, it works. But two, and this is the main reason why I absolutely actually had a great time watching this. Michelle Yeoh's performance to me is the glue that holds this movie together. Everybody else in this movie is great, but to me, this is her show and she nails it. This is my favorite performance of Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, and I mean, it's 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 early in a way, but I see this movie holding 
holding a lot of momentum throughout the year. I hope so. I, I think I think Oscar's consideration for this thing is serious. I, I do. I think it's that good. Yeah. I think it's that good, at least in a visual aspect. And Michelle Yeoh. I think Michelle Yeoh. I think if nobody else is is probably this is an early candidate for one of the best performances of the year. Yeah. Uh, because it's such a difficult performance too. And I saw a really good interview with her not too long ago, which actually had her tearing up and getting emotional about it because she said that she hasn't gotten like very deep and layered roles. This is easily the most like dense role she's ever played. And she's she, wanted that challenge for years. She is either two things in a movie. She's either the Kung Fu lady partner sidekick to James Bond or Jackie Chan. Or she's the mean old Asian lady like she was in Crazy Rich Asians. And she was great in that movie. And that movie, you know, like, let's give credit where credit is due. Yes, Crazy Rich Asians did break down, like, some barriers, you know, showing, like, you know, people of color in the Asian community can make a movie that makes a ton of money. But Michelle Yeoh has been overdue for a performance like this. When you look at her, you know, the other female, not lead, but character in this movie, which is Jamie Lee Curtis, who throughout her whole career has had roles like this. And even recently, they've re-examined the whole Laurie Strode thing. Um, but I want to give shout-outs to the other performances that also did a great job at keeping me interested in the movie. Just kept me involved at points to where this movie was getting a little bit ridiculous for me with its visuals and... You know, I was just kind of like getting lost with the story. But man, it has been so long and I'm so glad to see him again. <laughs> but I might butcher his name here. K. Hugh Kwan, man. Little short round from Indiana Jones is all grown up and he was fantastic in this movie. <laughs> And he came back, man. Like, I, I forgot. I mean, it, it, I, it makes sense. I forgot that he, like, retired or, yeah. like, removed himself from acting. Uh, he was also Data in the Goonies. Yep, I was going to say he's um, Data in the Goonies as well. Yeah, it was so cool seeing him. Stephanie Sue yep. as well. She's in it. This is kind of like her breakout role of the four, of the core four of this movie. She, It's really her breakout role, so to speak. All these actors are good. Even um, um, the grandfather, who, I mean, if you've, if you've seen any, like, 90s cartoon, you've recognized this voice. James Hong, uh, he, he has the most iconic voice. Big Trouble, Little China is where I saw him first as the Emperor. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is such a great collection of actors who can really just take a role and make it their own. Especially for the newcomer, like you said. Um, Stephanie Hu, who just fits in perfectly here as the daughter, Joy Wang. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a lot of cool stuff in here too. And you know what the funny thing about Stephanie Sue actually? Stephanie Sue, uh, she played on Broadway. She was in the SpongeBob musical as Plankton's wife. Oh Karen. no way! <laughs> I, I just saw that. I, I just saw that. That's pretty sweet. But and th and this is where too, like to give you an idea. If you don't know what this movie is, or you've just been hearing things about it, mm -hmm. th this is there. There's gonna be a little bit of a divide, I think, because I, I like how Joe uh, built it as film hipsters. You know, which we kind of are. In some sort of degree but the, um there's always the there's also the old joke that says uh uh a20 the reason a the studio a24 is called a24 is that they're the only movies that exist to a24 year old <laughs> uh, but but moreover though and i'm gonna say this right now ever since i turned 25 and now 26 there's been a few more of these i've been like these are starting to get annoying to me <laughs> For sure, no. Um, but they, they no, they still know how to pick them. They truly do. But like going into it though, the one thing that might alienate some people or, or going to go over some people's heads because it, some of it did me initially. But like, if you know these actors, you're gonna enjoy it even more. Like Michelle Yeoh too. The Daniels uh, are nuanced in including like callbacks to yeah. her early career in Hong Kong action she, movies, which I'm truthfully Hong Kong cinema is not a cinema I am super familiar with too. Yeah. I'm just letting I'm just getting that out there. That's not a, a facet of cinema. I almost feel like you kind of have to be all in or all out with those movies, and I'm not. And I'm not in that sort of sphere. That's never been my wheelhouse. But Michelle Yeoh, obviously famous for her career in these Hong Kong action movies, there's a lot of callbacks. It's, there's subtle they're not over the over the top but there's a lot of subtle callbacks to her sort of work in that and then for as far as Quan goes he does have some little callbacks as well to his former roles but they do not like the Daniels are careful here yeah. they're not making this an easter egg hunt they're careful here where it's like if you know and you're a film fan and you recognize these actors and you know their filmography then you're gonna get it yeah 
if you don't, if you don't, you're, if you're not going to feel excluded because the movie doesn't make its central focus. And that's hard to do, especially when it comes to like people who love movies like Shiner and Quan clearly do. It's hard not to like shine the spotlight on it and be like, look how clever we are. But they're confident enough that like the, the real ones who will get yeah. this will get it. They don't need, they don't need all the attention. On it. And, and they, do, they do it smartly too. Like, I don't want to ruin too many of the universes that you see in this movie, but there's literally just a universe. It's just Michelle Yeoh. It's just like literally her life. Um, but what they do with that universe, it's a very emotional moment in the movie. It, it involves her and her husband in like, you know, a what if scenario, the one who walked away scenario and like the way it's handled and the conversation they had, I was like, damn, that was really good. I, I don't want to get into critiques too early. Um, I, you know, actually, Steve, keep going. We'll, we'll, we'll get my critiques later. I don't want to get into it too early. Sure. Um, I, I also think that a, that a less compelling movie, a movie that would have just been interested in universe hopping, which this movie clearly is. Yeah. There's a lot of games being Space played. Space Jam, a, a new movie. Odyssey, or whatever it was called. Easy, <laughs> easy. Easy, it ain't like that. Um, <laughs> this is not, this, this is like an actual, this is not a server version. No, no, I'm saying like th that's the movie that's interested in being like, hey, let's sure. keep moving the jump, uh, jump to uh, new universes like every 20 seconds. I feel no, I, I picked up what you put down there, but yeah. the, the thing is, a lesser movie would not have been focused on the human interest elements of these characters, yes. and that's where this movie I think really is a cut above. Um, because it's through Evelyn's ability to gain strength and empathy during her dimensional trips that the purpose for this experience is to like better understand the lives of others where she has been way too consumed with her own perceived misgivings and failings that she's forgotten to realize. And we do this as humans sometimes. I've done it. I, I do it. You think everybody else in your life is the supporting character and you are the lead actor over here. <laughs> We're all guilty of it in, in some ways. I know I certainly am. Um, you know, you think your problems are more interesting than anybody else's or your problems carry on a greater weight, but it's like everybody's, especially this day and age, everybody's fucking struggling. You know what I mean? Yeah. In some way, shape or form, everybody's trying to get their head above water. And that's where this movie, I think, shines is like, through all the chaos, through all the sort of universe hopping, as I was calling it, um, there's actually a term for it. Um, there's a term for it in this movie that's sort of uh, that's sort of a uh, verse jumping, excuse me. Um, the, the, through all of that, though, the other remarkable thing about this movie is that it's able to come back and find its emotional core yes. and remind you that this isn't a sound and light show. I can't believe it, but honestly, I mean, this wouldn't be my favorite film of the year, but it, but it, it's probably top three. I can think of like three. I'm not going to go into the other two, but like three of my favorite scenes so far of the year, one of which is in this movie. And it's the, and it's a, and nobody, everybody's gonna think I'm friggin' nuts, but if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. One of the most moving, most significant oh, I scenes I think say. I've seen seen in movies all year involves two boulders communicating yes. via on screen text. <laughs> that, Love that scene. The, I, that was a lean forward scene for me. The, I was in a theater by myself when I saw this movie, and oh, lucky you. Yeah, it's, I went to the Glen Art Theater, and I've never. Okay, just real quick. Oh wow, okay, I that's supposed to be a nice one. It is. It is very dark, though. <laughs> I had to go down a long, dark hallway, and as soon as I got into the theater, I was a minute late, and they were playing the Northman trailer, and so the theater was pitch black because that movie is shot, like, you know, in the dark and everything, and I just could not find my seat, and I was like, ah, screw it. I'm in this theater by myself. No one's buying a ticket to come see this at 4 o'clock on a Monday, <laughs> so I just sat down wherever. But, yeah, no, when that scene came on, that is definitely, I think, one of the strongest scenes of, like, emotions in a while, and... Yeah, it involves two boulders talking to each other. I won't ruin how they talk to each other or why they are, but it's it's great, man. I was just sitting there like, wow, that was... I think what, it, what made it work so well, too, is that this movie has a lot going on. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of information they're throwing at you, rules that sometimes they don't even follow. <laughs> um, that when you get this just two-minute scene of just quietness, it actually really hit. It was like between all this noise... Oh my god, here is a scene that I can actually just take in, relax, and really pay attention to what's being talked about here. 
And it wasn't a wink and a nudge moment of silence. Like, hey, you need this. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Like, no, it had something to say. It did. Like, it, it was, it, and it was impacting. And I, I love that scene. And, it, and it's weird. Like I said, if you try to explain it to somebody who hasn't seen this thing or hasn't even heard of it, it doesn't land. <laughs> no, but in the middle land. of this thing, when it comes and what is said in between that scene and, and sort of the significance they overlay onto that particular universe. Like, it, I mean, it's only about a two and a half minute. I don't think it's a three minute scene. It's not long. Long, but it's it's very moving yeah and i and, and i thought i was gonna be nuts because there's so much really for lack of a better term very cool you know visuals in this thing i thought i was nuts until i talked to my best friend who saw it my best friend said you know what that was my favorite scene too yeah he goes i he goes i was i was thinking about that scene more than anyone else after seeing the movie i, I think they do a great job at introducing that scene very humorlessly uh humorlessly and then when they actually keep going with it it's one of those. It's one of the scenes they cut to because there's other two universes they cut to for like a sight gag that they try doing an emotional thing with it. And just for me, it didn't work as strongly as this one did, um, which involves a universe where you have hot dogs for fingers. And I just thought that one kind of like overstayed its welcome. And another one that involves two chefs that I won't ruin the surprise there because I did get a big laugh out of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. There are this movie's not flawless, yeah. and, and and now it's kind of like, and yeah, and you're new, you're newish to Letterbox too, so you're gonna realize that this is one of those movies that like I've tried not to go down the rabbit hole too deeply because I think I think we're at the point right now where the circle jerk is, for lack of a better term, is getting a little bit overboard. Yeah, with this thing in some ways. I've seen five out of five reviews where it's just like, dude, I don't even feel like you really meant this. Like you're just giving it a five out of five to join the the camp. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, but I mean, all that aside though is like. It's not this to take away, yeah. It's not to take away how there, great this movie's this is. not flawless, and its flaws are not ones to get hung up on. But to your point, I feel like they, there is one universe where everybody's got sausage fingers, and people learn to do things that they would normally do with their fingers with their feet. Um, they cut to that about five times too many. Yeah, and it's and and the thing about it too is that like my audience, this was strange. I saw this on a Sunday morning with like <laughs> with like there was about maybe I want to say ten people, including me. About ten people or so. It wasn't like Father Stu. I wanted to go see Father Stu. There's forty people in here. Can you tell I live in a Catholic area? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, but like seeing this movie, my well, they, audience. I was gonna say they see the poster to this. They probably think it's like some Buddhism movie or something. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> they gave out Oscars for best poster. This would be in the running. But the the, the thing too is that. I was like, kind of like, you know, watching. Cause like whenever I see a movie, especially a movie like this, like this weird, I'm looking forward to the Northman for the same reason or even unbearable weight yeah. is that like, I like to kind of watch the audience too while I'm watching the movie. I like to, kind of, that's why I sit. That's part of one of the reasons I sit so far back, but like I was watching the audience and like, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of, I was surprised. There wasn't a lot of engagement with the audience with this thing. I don't know if my audience was just squares. I don't know, but like, I also, too, I will say this, and there's no way to say this without sounding a little bit pretentious. I didn't find a ton of the comedy to be that funny Yeah, in this movie. I didn't think the comedy landed a lot. I... But, it, but it didn't land with a thud. It, did, it wasn't like a bad joke when you're just wincing. It mm -hmm. just was like, like a nod, like an acknowledgement. I didn't find the comedy as strong as i was led to believe going into this it's, thing it's uh and i've heard this term used it's the festival like film festival humor where it's you get everybody all riled up that when they see something on screen they'll go like ah, ha, 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 like that's just look what they're doing they're doing this in a movie that's hilarious like um and it's, it's the fest it's the fe it's the festival darling yeah yeah um and there are to me the best jokes in this movie is when it's just michelle yo and her husband uh just interacting and it's Michelle Yeoh just reacting like, what the hell is going on? That's where I got like my, my biggest laughs out of. I did say there was one sight gag that I did laugh at that involves two chefs. But even then, that starts to overstay its welcome. And then the, the boulder thing, the way that's introduced, I think was very, like, very funny. I actually got a good chuckle out of it. Um, and it helped reel me back in. And again, I mean, as much as like, you know... My, my biggest complaint with this movie is like, yeah, I do think the humor is a bit all over the place where it becomes a little bit too cartoony for its own good. It does manage to reel me back in because of its characters. 
a hundred percent. This thing never lost me. Uh, it never, it, it, and it's funny because you think about it, like just for a couple of our criticisms, this would break these criticisms, I think would break another movie. Yeah. But with, with this movie though, it's so bold. And, and also another thing I, we haven't mentioned this yet. It's very optimistic for, for, for a movie like this, just when it starts to go down this path, when it introduces the everything bagel, which is one of the big <laughs> sort of metaphors of the movie. It's basically a metaphor for like, like it's like, it's a black hole type thing, but it's a metaphor for nihilism in, in so many ways, which is kind of like the hip cool thing. I think Rick and Morty kind of popularized that a little yeah. bit. Actually, Rick the, and Morty whole... is what was like pop, popping my head throughout this movie. Like if you love the interdimensional cable bits, you'll pop probably love like the parts they do in this movie <laughs> I, I and i and i don't call out rick and morty i honestly haven't seen enough of it to really form a cogent opinion but like the reason i bring it up is because i i, I feel like the tr the time when everybody when it was when rick and morty started really peaking in popularity was also sort of the time people were like life sucks dude no nothing matters you know what i mean and that like that started to become like the hip trendy thing you know the nihilistic nothing matters attitude and this movie like if you're not paying attention, you could mistake it for that. But the movie is very anti-nihilist. And that's another thing about this that I really like, is that the movie sort of comes back in the last 20 minutes to like reject that whole idea. And it get and how I sort of described it in my review is I said one of the I think the main takeaway for me is that like if losing ourselves by focusing on our own flaws and shortcomings compounds such things as nihilism or like generational trauma, then maybe there's a compassionate approach is like the way to go some outward appreciation for others and the acceptance of who they are might be the only way to cut through the chaos and even if for nothing but a fleeting moment appreciate like the the constant treadmill of life that we're on and and, and i think that that's an important thing with this movie is that it through all the chaos and the color vomit and a lot of like the kaleidoscopic visuals for lack of a better term it leaves you with ideas to take away or at least little elements or lines of dialogue or moments that it leaves you to take away and i think that coupled with the human interest is what makes this movie a cut above oh, i agree no nah, you basically nailed that i'm good to give uh, final thoughts if you want sure i'm trying to think if there's anything else i wanted to touch on I, there is it's just you know again i don't want to ruin too much for people who are no, actually that's, yeah, that's the other movie. issue that's the other issue um we didn't talk much about or i mean you, you can tell she's having a lot of fun. Jamie Lee Curtis oh. is very You know, good. yeah, no, I got the, man, Jamie Lee Curtis she's is wild, so man. happy she gets to do a role like this where she doesn't have to worry about Michael Myers chasing her or anything, man. Like, she just comes in and just, I'm having a blast with this one. Like, her action scene she does with Michelle Yeoh, man, had me cracking up. Like, <laughs> the, the look of just being, like, an IRS agent. <laughs> It's like she nailed that perfectly. Like, yeah, I'm here to help you with your taxes. Yes. <laughs> and it kind of goes back to like, you, 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 you know, it, you know, it's funny. Like now that I think I this totally just popped in my head this instant because the, the whole thing, you know, she gets sucked into this universe, you know, or like she gets sucked into this verse jumping shenanigan thing when she's going to when she's going for her business audit to do her taxes and stuff yeah and i just thought about it i'm like that that's not a coincidence i'm thinking about it like what do they always say the only two guarantees in life are death and taxes that can't be a coincidence you know because much of the movie i don't think we mentioned this much of the movie it, is set in an irs yeah, office. yeah yeah as much as we are saying like there's universe jumping and everything no 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 most of this movie does take place in an IRS building. And that might sound boring to you. No, they make it visually cool. Like, they, they do a great job. And the action yeah. scenes, the action scenes make it fun. Uh, it keeps the story moving along. Yeah, I think the last thing I'll just really touch on quickly here is just like, I mean, I mean, flowers all around for a lot of different people here. Jason uh, Kisvarde, the production designer here, yeah. works his ass off to make like an assembly of cubicles and like window front offices make real like really interesting and i don't want to give away but like there's are there are some office supplies including a particular award which i don't want to get into but they're like that that like anything's fair game in this battle uh and, and i think that's a lot of fun and that's just, a big credit to the production design team I, I here as well it. as e editor paul rogers who has like the toughest task i think of trying to keep the damn wheels on this movie oh uh, man no i agree with you like they did a great job with production sets everything <laughs> editing in this as well very well done 
I just remembered the one where it's like, because the rules, I'll, I'll leave that to you guys to find out as a viewer to see, like, you know, where what you determine the rules are. Because, you know, I'll say this. The way they explain the rules in this movie, it, it does make sense, and it leaves it open enough to interpretation of how things can work. And, like, sometimes it, like, you know, as the movie's going along, it feels like it's betraying that rule set. But I'm having a lot of fun watching the movie still compared to something like Tenet, which is explaining the rules throughout that whole yes. damn movie. But I don't understand a damn thing that's going on, nor do I care about the story. That's like the biggest difference here. I didn't even I that, that movie didn't even pop that movie rarely pops into my mind, but that movie didn't even pop into my mind watching this. But that is so true. It's like you want to talk about a movie that's actually enjoyable, if complex, and kind of like at least in the beginning part of it distills the rules down to like three solid points about verse jumping and yeah. what, who am I and why are you doing this? It at least gets the who, what, where, one and why out of the way. So like, you're not questioning everything and it's also not deliberately, deliberately trying to be opaque, yeah. which, which is a big credit to this. If you want to jump into ratings though, that's fine. I've, I've really said pretty much all major points on this thing. Um, and, and it's just great too, that like, I think that we have these young, ambitious filmmakers that are really absolutely going against the grain and tired of a lot of the same stories. And the Daniels, too, I don't know. Like, their path forward to me is interesting because you can't... Granted, they've only really made two movies together on top of a handful of shorts, but, like, you can't easily pigeonhole what the hell they're going to do next. And I love directors like that. It's part of the reason I've been gassing them up. And we'll find out in... I think exactly two months if I was right, according to you and Dom about Cha Cha Real Smooth. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I gas up Cooper Rafe so much because Cooper Rafe has made now, he's made two very different dramas and then a, his third movie is going to focus on a, on a hockey scandal. I love directors that you cannot easily pigeonhole. Yeah. And these guys too are defiant in that. They almost see, they really resist that. So this is three and a half out of four stars for me. I don't know if I'm as in love with it as a lot of like, colleagues and can and other people that have really gotten into this but i will say this though i have read amidst a lot of of praise for this movie i have read a lot of personal testaments i, I even this one woman i follow on letterbox talked about how seeing this movie with her mother was like an unexpected sort of is like occurrence or at least an unexpected I see that. experience so i i mean i i do think that this movie especially stephanie sue's character we didn't touch on her a ton i think she too her character has a lot of room to resonate because again i hate to keep comparing it comparing it to turning red but it touches on those elements of generational it's, trauma it is turning red in the sense that you do have a similar theme here but you are getting it from a different point you're getting it from the parental point of view now yes compared to the you know the daughter's point of view and how they're seeing their mother it's the it's the mother who has the blinders on in this movie and needs to learn to put them down and actually see what's going around her they could have won either way by either releasing this thing i mean you, you wouldn't have wanted to go up against dr strange 2 next month but oh, like God, no. <laughs> yeah, but but you you wouldn't have I, wanted that but i, I would have said they could have won like they released this movie like ahead of tax day i don't know if that was a, a, cogn a point of cognizance yeah. there <laughs> but like they could have probably won to releasing this around mother's day at least for the some the symbology of it yeah what say you though it's three and a half stars for me i thoroughly enjoyed this thing and i'm so grateful i got to see it in the theater um i had a blast watching this movie i mean both you and I have shared that, like, you know, to the, a point that we want to make so clear because as much as we are having criticisms, because we want to make it clear to the people who are circle jerking this movie, uh, that we did enjoy it, that it is a great film and that it is something refreshing that I do love seeing, uh, especially from, of course, yes, A24. I love seeing, it, it has elements that I, I hate seeing from A24, like, I saw Lamb now and I'm just kind of like, whatever about that movie, um... Still, Lamb is not that good. Yeah, still haven't seen The Green Knight. Still waiting on that one. But, like, again, this is more on the side of, hey, this is what I like to see from A24. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's you know, it's unique. It's doing its own thing. But it is still entertaining at the end of the, old, at the, end of the day compared to something like Lamb, which is, it's weird, unique. But at the end of the day, it's just kind of like, I feel like I just watched a bunch of nothing lead up to nothing. Um, What was I going to say? This movie is, I, I think anybody can have fun with it, uh, with the right mindset going into it just for the ride, or if you're a film nerd, buff, whatever you want to call it, you're, you're going to love this thing. You really are. Uh, this is a also, this is also a three and a half out of four star movie for me as well. I had a blast watching it. Michelle Yeoh, I hope you get nominated for an Oscar. Hell, I, I mean, I know it's so early on in the year, 
But, I mean, if you win it, I'd be so happy for you with how good this performance I was. Would. Like, this, I mean, you had to, like, change the way you are as a person several times in this movie. It's not an easy feat to do. Um, and just the way she played just even the normal Evelyn, like, I thought she just nailed that so perfectly.